Dear brothers and sisters, it is great privilege to be able to record this message, message for Algeria from Algeria and for this uh, incredible uh, conference finishing the task. My name is Youssef Oraman. I come from Algeria. I was born and grew up in a very conservative Muslim home. Back in 1977, I heard the gospel. 1980, I gave my love to Jesus, and he has done incredible transformation work in my life. I committed myself to serve the Lord since 1980, actually since the summer of 1980. Until today, by God's grace, we kept going, my wife and I, for his glory and also for advancing of his kingdom. We have been now serving as a couple in Algeria since 1988, now over than nearly 32 years. And by his grace and his enabling wisdom, we have seen amazing things happening. But the task has just started and is not finished. So we need all your prayer and your support and your encouragement to be able to finish the task here in Algeria, but also beyond. As I have been thinking about this message and how to uh, start, how to develop, how to share, somehow the Lord really put in my heart the title of this message, message is The Christian Faith in Fire. And as you know, in this part of the world, we have been under a lot of persecution since many, many years. And recently, actually, the Argentine government, since last year and the year before, they, has been, they have been closing down churches. And at, up till today, 13 churches has been closed, including our local church here at this mission training center. And we kept going by faith, believing that God in this uh, time of fire and persecution has been doing an amazing work in our lives. And God has opened to us incredible doors, especially through, through the social media, where we have seen incredible ways that God has touched thousands and thousands of lives. Many are coming to faith, but of course, there is nothing can stop or limit God's wisdom and God's spirit. Not even the buildings or the persecution of the government. Looking back of the, the church in North Africa, in the early centuries, of course, the church was so strong and all we know of the uh, great pillars of the faith like uh, Cyprian and Tartalian and St. Augustine who lived and he labored here in this land of Algeria, especially in the East. Unfortunately, because of many reasons, the church became very weak, divided. So when the Muslim invasion came, when the Muslims invaded North Africa, including Algeria, back on the 7th century, so the church was not that strong to resist the persecution. In our older records we have, by the 9th century, most of the evidence of the church vanished. By the 12th century, there was no church whatsoever. So Islam dominated the whole of Algeria and North Africa, and of course, was also went on to Europe and to Spain especially. So, we will look back and we see that unfortunately the church was so strong and suddenly really the church has vanished, as I said, for a number of reasons. There is a book called The Holy Seed. Uh, it's a great book that talk a lot about the church and the history of the church. You can find it easily in Amazon. But that can give very good uh, teaching and also about the church and also how the church has been early centuries and how it has vanished. And then there was no Christian witness till a missionary from a Catholic church, actually from Spain, 
came to Algeria on the, on the uh, 13th century by the name of Raymond Lull. And he came actually from Spain, he, and he came to, he was a missionary in Europe, but also God put in his heart to come to witness among the Algerians. That was in the 13th century. And actually he mastered Islam and the Arabic language. So he was coming back and forth from Italy to Algeria to a town called Bijaya, and he was debating with so many Muslims. And he was very effective. Unfortunately, he was stoned. And when they took him from Algeria, from Bijaya, that city, to Rome, on, on the way, he died. So in our records, that there was no Christian witness for many, many, many centuries, till 1830, when the uh, French came to colonize Algeria, and Algeria was dominated by the French, but but uh, the 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 the, uh, the government at the time in Algeria, he has signed a contract with the French uh, to allow them to uh, take over Algeria to colonize the land, but with uh, an agreement not to witness to the Algerians. I mean, not to evangelize the Algerians. And actually, at that time, of course, the Algerians, they were very strongly resistant to Christianity and to the Christian witness because of a number of reasons. Of course, they were all Muslims. And then the, 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 the witness among the Muslims were so uh, weak, not significant at all, till the 1881, when the evangelical missionaries came to Algeria, and they started to evangelize the Algerians, mainly, of course, a lot of them went to Algiers, the capital, but also went to the, to the Kabylie. It has not been easy. It has been very tough, very difficult. Very few actually came to faith, and most of those who came to faith in the end on that time, they were all killed or poisoned by their families. And many of them, they were buried in the gardens of the missionaries. So it has not been easy, and so many sacrifices, so many uh, costs, but the outcome or the result was so limited. But God, in his wisdom and his amazing love and grace, he gave, he gave them the grace to persevere. They were holding on the promise of God that Jesus has promised to build his church and the gates will not prevail against it. So they stayed. And they stayed, and actually as far as we know and we remember, that they have managed to establish or to plant a church in Algiers. It's called, it used to be called the Good News Church, La Bonne Nouvelle. And it was a mixed church between Algerians and expatriates. There were also small groups in the West, in Oran City, and other few Christians in different places. But actually, there was the only church that has been really established. It was in Algiers. With, they also has established back in 1974 elders from the Algerians as well. So that was the, 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 the result, if I can say, of the outcome of the almost 100 years of ministry. But God, in his amazing wisdom and inspiration, he inspired a group of believers from that church, Algerians. And God put in their hearts to, uh, uh, to, go, to, uh, to, go, to, to go to the Kabylie region, which is in the east of Algiers. Mainly the Kabylie is known by the and the Kabylie people, which is a Berber area, has about seven to eight millions at least Kabyles. And they went to, um, to the place in the mountain, you know, to, to really have a, uh, a retreat, a spiritual retreat. But God, in his amazing plan, suddenly they met with so many young people. They came there to play soccer or football, as we say. And somehow God has opened the door to them 
to reach out to these young people. And they have seen incredible signs and wonders through healing and visions and so many things happening in there. But then the, 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 uh, those who came to faith, they were actually with the first one to see what we call a revival. And actually out of this many young people, maybe I would say a hundred or more, they have seen about 40 came to faith. That was the, the miracle that has ever, ha ever happened in Algeria all these years or the centuries. But then that group of believers went through a lot of persecution. And actually out of the, uh, the 40 who came to faith, about 36 gave their faith and went back to Islam. And only four of them remained faithful and they stayed firm and they kept persevering by God's grace, and they kept memorizing the Word of God, especially memorizing, you know, ver Bible verses about fear. And somehow, they start to, to grow, and they start to witness in their own their village, where they were in the Kabylie, and the church start to grow slowly, but then they decided to fast and pray. And they decided to fast and pray for one year nonstop. Fasting and praying and meeting every day, memorizing the word of God and asking God to reveal to them his ways and his strategy. Amazingly enough, the same group of believers went to the same place where they had been touched by the Holy Spirit in that uh, in, in, in that place on, on the mountain where they played, uh, used to play uh, soccer or football. And somehow the brothers, they told me when they were there, somehow the Holy Spirit came upon them. And when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they experienced incredible touch of God. And they started to speak in different languages. They started to, to fall and confess and and somehow with just incredible experiences, almost as we read in, in, in Acts chapter two. So when the, the, uh, the, they had this experience with God and they kept of course praying and seeking God, God has revealed to them his strategy. And his strategy was so clear. He, he gave them a strategy how to reach out to the Kabylie how to reach out to the rest of Algeria and also from Algeria is to go beyond the rest of the world, especially the Muslim world and mainly North Africa. So God in his ways has started this revival and God in his also ways, he has given them the strategy, which, is, which was totally, you know, a pure strategy of the Holy Spirit. So when we look back, the church, of course, was vanished in the 9th or the 12th century, but God somehow, in his wisdom, he sent those missionaries back in 1881 for almost 100 years with no results, but God has blessed and honored their sacrifice and their witness. The outcome today, since 1981, July 1981, till today, 2020, we have seen tens and tens of thousands of Muslims coming to faith. Many churches has been established and actually one of the churches here that we have in the Kabylie is the fourth largest church in, our, in, in the Arab world. That church, actually, the senior pastor told us that he baptized every year 150 Muslims. And of course, I, don't, I believe that not less than four to 5,000 Muslims you know, get baptized every year. So God has, has done it, he has planted his church, and as I said early on, that the enemy has not been happy. Even we do have an official license that has been granted to the Protestant church back in 1974, but because of this revival and many, many, especially Kabylie people coming to faith, 
the government has, has not been happy, so we have had a lot of persecution since 2006, March 2006, you know, it was a new ordinances of the Algerian government that has forbidden us to witness or to carry even Christian books or even, you know, to meet in different places. But God, in his amazing ways, I believe one of the biggest miracles that has happened here in Algeria, that God has helped the Algerian church to overcome fear. And then, of course, with these uh, new ways, this is overcoming fear and kept witnessing, so the Algerian government has been, of course, the persecuting the church here last year, 2018, uh, 2019, sorry, and also 2018. Many churches have been closed, especially those who are very strategic churches has been closed down by the government. And we still now uh, having uh, those churches are still closed. And we try to, of course, to maintain our faith, to maintain, of course, our work with God, to maintain our ministry through different ways, through the house groups, and then also through a lot of social media. But it has not been easy for us and also for so many believers. So as I said before that I choose the title of this message, The Christian Faith in Fire. And it's an amazing story in the book of Acts, chapter 8, from verse 1, of course, to verse uh, 8, and also in 1 Peter 1 and verse 7. It says in this verse here, 1 Peter 1, 7, it says, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which is perishes even though refined by fire, may result in, in praise, glory, and honor, honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So what he's saying here, the Apostle Peter, that somehow God has allowed the fire to purify our faith, to purify our walk with him, and to purify, of course, our witness. So, uh, as I look back, I say, you know, the church here has been under a lot of fire, but I am deeply convinced God, by his grace and his wisdom, has helped the Arjun church to be established. Now, my question is this. What really motivates us to go and finish the task. In these verses, those verses of Acts chapter 8 and verse 1 to verse 8, I believe that the church has been motivated because of their love for God. I would like you know, to really stress that one thing that, has, that, that can motivate us to go and, and finish the task is because of our love for God. Nothing else, nothing more. It says in Matthew 22 and verse 37, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And in Romans 5, 5, it says that God poured his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So if we love God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our beings, with all our mind, and God has poured his, heart, his love into our hearts, I believe that because of this love, we have to be motivated to go and finish the task and preach the good news to those who haven't heard yet. In Psalm 96 and verse 3, he says, Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all the people. We need to go and declare God's glory, to declare God's uh, marvelous things to declare what God has done on the cross through the power of his work on the, uh, on, on the cross through his son that the people need to know about this incredible plan of salvation that God has provided for all the human beings. Because of our love for God that can motivate us to go and preach and finish the task. You know, one of my great privileges is to be able to meet those missionaries that they have been here in Algeria. And actually many, many of them went to be with Jesus. I remember meeting one of our sisters, she's called uh, Irene Harris. 
She went to be with the Lord a few years ago. She told me when she came to Algeria back in 1952, the senior missionaries they have given to them some kind of training and, 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 and orientation, and they told them, you have to be prepared. You might stay here for the rest of your lives without seeing one single convert. Just imagine coming here to serve God, giving all their security, give all their families, culture, language, whatsoever, back in their homeland, coming to this land of Algeria, receiving this training, telling them that you have to be prepared. You might stay here for the rest of your life, lives without seeing a single convert. I believe what has motivated them to stay is because of the love for God. Nothing else, nothing more. And God, of course, has honored, as I said, their sacrifice. The other reason why we have to be motivated to go and preach and finish the task, I believe Jesus' command is clear and is sufficient. Jesus said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. In Matthew 28 and verse 29, he has commanded us to go. This is very clear reason why we have to go, because God has poured his life in our lives. He has commanded us to go, to preach and make disciples of all nations. And that is, it is, is very clear. There is no way we can argue with Jesus' command. He commanded us, we have to go. And this is why all those missionaries have been coming for those many, many years to the Muslim world, and also they came here because they obeyed God's command. And also, for us, it's the same. We need to go because Jesus has commanded us to go. You know, my friends, I have been witnessing now to Muslims for almost 40 years. It is an exciting ministry. If you ever think that reaching out to the Muslims is the hardest stuff, I want to assure you, is not true. The Muslims are human beings. They are also looking for answers for their lives, and they want to have the assurance of their salvation. But one thing that I always preach that there is no one like Jesus. My witness to the Muslims, I have to concentrate fully on who is Jesus. And of course, there is no one like him. Look at his birth. He did not inherit the sin of man. Look at his life. Look at his, his witness, his miracles. All what he has done but the amazing thing as well, he died and he rose again. So, we should not and we have no right to be ashamed or to be fearful to preach the good news to the Muslims or to any other uh, religion or to other people simply because Jesus is unique and there is no man, no prophet, no whatsoever like him. And I believe the people, they need to hear about his uniqueness. It's incredible uh, ways that God has provided to the humankind to be saved is through Jesus. And I would like to encourage you, as you go out and share and proclaim, remember to concentrate on Jesus because he is unique and there is no one like him. So many times, the Muslims, you know, they get shocked and they say, we have never heard about him like this. All what they know is they know about him in the Quran, of course, that Jesus is a prophet. He came to prepare the way to the other prophet, which is, of course, the final one, as, as, as they believe, is Muhammad. But, of course, is no. I say no. You know, if you can compare Jesus with any prophet, there is nobody like him. And Jesus actually, he said, I am the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. So, God has put his life in our hearts. God commanded us to go. And also, we have a unique message to preach. 
is Jesus Christ, the living Savior. And there is no one like him. And we have no right to be ashamed not to preach to others about Jesus or to be fearful. fearful. The other reason that can motivate us to go is uh, we want to see people's life changed and transformed. That is very important. I mean, today the world is full of sin, full of violence, full of injustice, full of everything. And we need people's lives to be changed and transformed. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, as you know, that anyone in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old things is passed away and everything is new. You know, one of my great privileges is to be able to meet with some ex-Muslim terrorists that has come to faith. And just to look at them and see how God has transformed even their faces from uh, a face of hatred, a face of, 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 of hardness, a face of, of killing and slaughtering and, and violence, they become joyful and, 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 and happy. And we have seen many who came to faith from these Muslim converts. So God's people's life has to be changed, but also I think one thing that has motivated us to meet us to go, that Jesus, in Jesus, there is an assurance of salvation. Hebrews 6, verse 19, Titus, you know, 12, 2, verse 11 to 15, Jesus is the only one who can give the assurance of salvation. Finally, God has put in our vision, in our heart, a vision to send out 1,000 Algerian missionaries with an Algerian also beyond, including, of course, short-term teams. And we have been now sending out so many people. And I believe that there is an amazing way to mobilize now these tens and tens of thousands of Algerians who came from Islam to train them, disciple them, and send them out. It's an incredible thing, what, it's an incredible way what God is doing through the social media, which has been also one of our main focus. And we have seen, of course, thousands and thousands who are watching them, many who are coming to faith. Just a few days ago, three new people came to faith. Finally, in Luke 10, verse 2, it says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers to his harvest field. That's my plea. That's my prayer. And please pray for us that God will arise workers to be sent to his harvest field. The harvests are white, and I believe it's the time to mobilize the Argentine church for missions within Algeria and beyond, reaching out all other parts of North Africa, the Arab world, and wherever the Muslims are. So, may God bless you and bless us all and help us by his grace to be fully motivated by his love to go out and finish the task. Thank you and God bless you.